Welcome back. We've discovered that the person who has the Alasi in an uproar is none other than a Harcourt Fenton Mud. Or Harry Mud, who is of course an old adversary of Kirk. He has appeared uh, in two episodes of the original series, uh, Mud's Women and I Mud, and I believe also in an episode of the animated series, Mud's Passion. Yeah, and he sh showed up that one time when he tried to, like, kill the crew of a starship repeatedly in a time loop. But we do not mention Discovery on this channel. Um... Anyway, we should probably look him up on the computer, see what it has to say about him. Mud. Harcourt Fenton. Harcourt Fenton, Harry Mudd, is one of the most infamous criminals at large in the Federation. A notorious con artist and troublemaker, Mudd has been imprisoned numerous times for petty crimes. While Mudd is not considered physically dangerous, he is quite devious and often uses dangerous means to ensure the success of his schemes. Starfleet captains who encounter Harry Mudd should be extremely wary. Uh, we already knew that. And he apparently um, went off to the Harappa system, so we should probably research that before we head there. Harappa, a star system whose fourth planet is the inhabited Class M world Chameleon. Chameleon has long been dominated by Alasi pirates, but lately has been struggling to break free of their influence. Well, good for them. Can we look them up? Topic not available, Captain. It appears not. Alright, so let's set a course for Harappa. And see um, if we can render assistance to Harry and what he's up to. Harappa is over here. Which is right next to where we are right now, which makes sense, I guess, since he fled from here. Couldn't have gotten that far. No more fighting, fortunately. And he seems to be on board that ship, I guess. The Harappan system is binary with a neutron pulsar in the vicinity causing difficulties with our sensor readings. I was able to trace Mud's transmission to this derelict. So, our friend Harry is on board, no doubt. Can you tell me anything about the derelict vessel? There are six major subdivisions within the hull. All systems are down. There is, however, limited atmospheric integrity. The environment appears to be the result of a temporary save -a ship life support generator. Not exactly a reliable model yet. We're being hailed by Mr. Mudd, sir. Captain, you came, but I'm touched. Harry, I have to be touched in the head to have anything to do with you. How's your lovely wife, Stella? That was a dirty trick, Kirk. However, you'll be glad to know I let bygones be bygones. If the Enterprise will stand by and fend off any pilots, I'll just finish my salvage operations here and be out of your hair. Computer records document that you filed notice that there was no salvageable value here, and that the ship was a common passenger tug. Did I say no value? Minimal, Captain, minimal. I meant nothing too promising when I filed the report. We both know my judgment isn't always perfect. I would say your judgment is never perfect, Harry. Perhaps we should beam over and judge the situation for ourselves. Ah, that isn't necessary, Kirk. I can handle... I mean... Harry, relax. We're old friends. We'll understand if things aren't picked up and looking neat. Kirk out. Yeah, probably better to uh, take a look for ourselves and see uh, what he's got there. And the dirty trick that he was referring to is, I believe, in uh, his last appearance on the original series, he was left stranded on a planet with uh, 
a lot of androids, a lot of whom were beautiful women, but he was also left in the end with uh, up to 500 copies of his uh, wife, who he wasn't exactly very fond of. <laughs> so that's who he was referring to. For what he was referring to. And he's on this derelict. I don't know if it's a an alien we're familiar with. Apparently trying to salvage some of the stuff on it, so let's see what he's got. I would very much like to see this alien ship, but the prospect of dealing with Harcourt Fenton mud again gives me pause. You and me both, Spock. I don't think we can hail him again. Our orders are to render whatever assistance we can, sir. Nope, we cannot. So, let's just beam down. Captain, the shields are up. And I forgot about Going that. shields, Captain. Spock, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the car. Welcome, Captain Kirk! So glad you're here! The Elazi have been terrible trouble to me. Well, you're terrible trouble to me, Harry. Tell me what this is all about. I happened upon this ship not long ago and dutifully registered as salvage, mind you. In the hold here, I discovered one of these devices in that box over there. When I tried one on a wall, it floated off the grease and dirt. Perfect for cleaning, near as I could see. I peddled a few of these Mud's Miracle Degrimers and everything was going perfectly well. Then something went wrong, right? Actually, no, Doctor, not then. I'd started offering a few other little items I found. Mud's Limited Coffee Substitute, a great little specialty item. Lenses to affirm packaging build-your-own-telescope kits. The collection of novelty paints, things like that. All of a sudden, the Elazi pirates are asking for me in every quadrant, wanting to know where I'm getting my goods. I see, Harry. Well, we'll look around here while the Enterprise remains close by. Look around all you like, Captain, but I'll be keeping an eye on you. I've registered this derelict as my salvage, and I don't want you running off with all my prizes. Harry, as official representatives of the Federation and of Starfleet, we recognize your rights to legitimate salvage. Need I say more? I understand perfectly, Captain. You carry on, Captain. Okay. So it seems like um, Harry has been selling stuff he found on the ship without knowing what it really is. And something about that has attracted the attention of the Alasi. See if we can figure out what that was, and also what the ship is, because it definitely doesn't look familiar to me. This place is cluttered with stored goods of every sort. It would take an army of workers weeks to examine every container and determine what is inside. We do not have an army of workers, nor do we have weeks, so we'll just do a uh, slightly less thorough inspection. You look but see nothing of note. Well, it's a door, but sure. This container holds bricks of what might have been pre-processed food a long time ago. Please tell me that's not where you got this coffee substitute. Harcourt Fenton Mud. Of course he's going to be honest and fair with you. Of course. There are shiny, multi-sided, spherical objects in this box. Okay. Odd-looking contraptions small enough to hold in one hand. This lens about the size of one's thumbnail magnifies like a fine optical glass. I'm assuming that's the lenses for the telescope kits that he was talking about. Don't know where the rest of the kit is supposed to be. Just happen need to happen to have something that these lenses fit in, I guess. James T. Kirk looks rather exasperated right now. Understandable. Dr. McCoy looks like he would like to violate the Hippocratic Oath on Harry Mudd, but you know he won't. Well, that's good, I guess. <laughs> Lieutenant Buchard is standing around watching everyone else converse with Harry Mudd. Another new security lieutenant. Don't know if they can die in this mission. Hmm. 
Mr. Spock is as close to annoyed as a Vulcan can get. And you know, that's saying something. Why do I have the feeling that I'm about to have a bad day? Kirk, now that we're together... It was a rhetorical question, Harry. Indeed. Jim, you can't seriously be thinking of helping Mud after all he's done. Bones, Federation law is clear on this. Federation law protects everyone, even Harry Mudd. Yeah, and we all know how devoted I am to Federation law. About as much as the Klingons are devoted to pacifism. That seems about right. So, you say you know how to break the gambling machines on Curlon 4? It's a system that cost a gambler his life, boy. He crawled up to me and whispered it with his dying breath. And it can be yours for a mere 200 credits. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Mudd. My mother didn't raise any fools in her family. Starfleet, you're all the same. No sense of adventure. And don't they not have money? I don't really know how that's supposed to work. Given the past record of Harry Mudd, Captain, I strongly recommend that you do not trust him. Mr. Spock, whatever gave you that impression? I thought Vulcans were supposed to be logical. I am. Your record is that of a greedy, amoral, sociopathic fraud who preys upon human emotion, most notably gullibility. For once, Spock, I couldn't have said it better myself. Why, I've never been so insulted in all my life. Leave it to Spock to cut right to the heart of the matter. Kirk, my friend, when have I ever given you the slightest bit of trouble? There was the time that you tried to commandeer the Enterprise to sell wives to miners, and then there was the time you stole the Enterprise to exchange us for androids who were holding you prisoner. Perhaps there have been a few minor misunderstandings. Don't push your luck, Harry. No mention of the animated series. Those were the two regular episodes he um, appeared in. Well, since we have a weird alien ship here, of course we should try to record as much information as we can. This storage bay is stockpiled with all manner of goods. Uh, you don't really need to walk there. A small energy device with a flanged opening at the front, about the size of one's thumbnail. These are computer memory transfer media, probably designed for use with the alien computer system. Interesting. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing about the lenses. Let's get some of this stuff. Done. 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 Very, uh, great diversity in the messages there. Let's see what we got. One of Mud's miracle degrimers. Is it? Let's try and use it. Dust and grease lifts off the surface, leaving this item clean as new. Well, at least he wasn't lying about that, so that's good. These lenses, about the size of one's thumbnail, magnify like fine optical glass. And this weird little hexagon thing. Shiny dodecagons as long as one's hand. Highly reflective, shimmering with the prismatic rainbow look of oil on water. Okay, dodecagon. Whatever. Um... Looking at these things in the inventory, it kind of looks like the lens and the degrimer go together, don't they? Let's try that. These two things fit together like they were made for each other. Hmm. I do wonder what kind of effect that would have had. What did that do to the device? Oh. Well, now I think we know why the Alassi pirates were so interested in finding out where Mud was getting these. 
Yeah. It looks like they're a weapon. When put together correctly, and since he was selling both parts individually, I guess somebody else figured out that they fit together. And now they want to know where to get more, I'm assuming. Can we tricorder the... No. We cannot. So, let's look around some more. There's interesting stuff in here. Perhaps there's more of interest on this ship. I guess we've solved the mystery of uh, why the Elasi are after mud very quickly. And yeah, this is <laughs> this is actually what uh, kind of uh, screwed me over when I was uh, playing through this before. Is I couldn't get the full score and I couldn't figure out what I was missing. And the answer is I was missing this room. <laughs> you can actually get through this entire uh, mission without ever going here. And it's not that obvious that you can go south from any screen. Like, you can't go south further than this, but there's no indication whether or not you can. Let's see what this is. You look but see nothing of note. Apparently it's nothing of note. Good to know. A save -a ship emergency life support generator generally used for temporary life support during evacuation of small damaged ships. Evidently, Mr. Mudd was unwilling to pay the price for a reliable salvage model. Okay, so he's using this to generate um, life support inside the ship. Which... Um, is apparently not what this model is designed for, so let's hope it won't fill on us. Tall, transparent columns run through the ceiling. Energy crackles in between the dodecahedrons inside them. Tall, transparent columns. A salvage lock catch. A common type used to link a derelict to the ship doing the salvaging. It appears that Harry Mudd managed to emplace this access hatch without significantly damaging the alien ship. Will wonders never cease? So I guess Harry's ship is through there. Anything else we can look at? A large claw-like device hangs from the ceiling. This room appears to have been the alien ship's engine pod. A ship-to-ship -ship access hatch and a temporary life support generator are evidently recent additions. This save -a ship life support generator has seen a great deal of use. It was never a reliable model, being prone to break down without warning. It is, however, properly connected with warning alarms for temperature, atmosphere, and radiation. That's good, at least. As one would expect, Mr. Mudd has sealed the hatch with his personal code. We cannot enter his ship, Captain. I suspect that's a blessing in disguise, Mr. Spock. You may be right. An unusual matter-antimatter engine, reminiscent of the designs created by the Hupuan of Seganus IV. Oh, right, the Hupuan of Seganus IV. Why didn't you say so immediately? This seems to be a crane of some sort, Captain. Currently, no power is running to it. This room appears to have been... Can't scan this weird-looking console or whatever it is. Nothing we can do here right now. But it's just important to know that the room is there. Let's head north. Interesting. The room reminds you of the weapons room of some old-style warships from the early days of starfaring. Three triangular blue buttons. Okay. Two yellow triangular buttons. And one... A red triangular button. I guess that qualifies as red. These cylinders have fallen down from the rest. A row of unmarked cylindrical containers. Interesting. These appear to have fallen down, but they are marked. An elaborate piece of alien-looking machinery. You look but see nothing of note. 
More doors? And another crane. A large claw-like device hanging from the ceiling. Mr. Spock is looking forward to the moment that he can sit down at the main computer and analyze the findings of this mission. I didn't do that in the engineering room, did I? Look at the crew. Or talk to them. I'll do that when we get back there, I guess. Lieutenant Buchard waiting for a chance to perform his duty. James T. Kirk, dwarfed by the technology that surrounds him. McCoy is scowling, probably from your meeting with Harcourt Fenton Mudd. Probably. A most interesting technology, Captain. If the Alassi gets hold of this, they'll make Mud seem like a perfect caretaker by comparison. Indeed. Probably better to uh, make sure that does not happen. It looks to me like these people knew how to defend themselves, Captain. That machinery in the middle of the room, however, is like nothing I recognize. And I thought I had seen just about everything. I wonder what's happening on the Enterprise right now. Scotty will take good care of it, Jim. He has before. I know, Bones. Okay. I wonder where that mud has gone. I wouldn't let him out of my sight. Mind you, I'm not too crazy about having him in my sight, either. That uh, sounds like a problem, then. Let's see what we've got here. Nothing to report, Captain. A weapons delivery system. It appears to be an accessory tied directly to the alien equivalent of our ship's phasers and photon torpedoes. Interesting. Not sure what these lights are for. Can't scan them individually. It seems to be part of a loading system for the weapon. It is also fully functional. Interesting. Unique, Captain. I believe these are self-referencing packed quantum cartridges. Power boosters! Oh, I've read about those, but they're just theoretical. Evidently, these are more than theoretical, Lieutenant Bukert. The energy initially released is infinitesimally small, but boosts itself until the power finally released is comparable to our photon torpedoes. The technical journals discussing the possibilities indicated it would create a weapon of greater range than those we have now, if not a greater punch. The machinery to deliver these cartridges would be an engineering feat as well, Captain. Interesting. Would definitely be good if we could take a closer look at those on the Enterprise. The control panel has power running to it, Captain. The control panel has unique, Captain. Power boost. Same description. The, technical... the machinery. To... Nothing to report, Captain. Let's see if we can do something with the control panel. It's all just pressing random buttons on a panel in a weapons bay that you know, don't know what they do is always a great idea. Alright, looks like that loads the capsule. The device has finished loading, Captain. What do the yellow ones do? It unloads it. Very useful. The device has been unloaded, Captain. And nothing with red. Maybe we need to load it first. The device has finished loading, Captain. Now let's try the red one. I believe, Captain, that this weapon must be hooked up through the main weapons battery. However, I've already examined the weapons console, and the main weapons battery on this ship was completely destroyed in the action, which made her a derelict. Mr. Scott would have to go over this thoroughly, but I would recommend we try to take this weapon with us to the Enterprise. I don't think we should tinker with technology we don't understand, Spock, and I'm surprised you'd suggest such a thing. Um, okay. <laughs> I agree that we should take it aboard the Enterprise. I'll try to raise the ship. Kirk to Enterprise. Kirk to Enterprise. I don't... I agree that we should take it aboard Let's the agree. Enterprise. I'll try to raise the ship. Kirk to Enterprise. Kirk to Enterprise.
Hmm, looks like our transmission is being blocked. That's not good. Wait, is that why Kirk was worried about what's happening on the Enterprise? Was he giving us a spoiler? Did he read ahead in the script and figure out that we had no communications? Okay, it doesn't look like we can do anything with this, though, until we can raise the ship again. So let's continue and explore. Interesting looking room. These, whoever these people were, they do like triangles, don't they? You look but see nothing of note. Does not tell us what kind of room this is. Padded inclines resembling a bed. Oh yeah, I see. This seems to be the main monitoring station for the beds. Above it is some sort of dispensary. Small containers of oddly colored liquids. Interesting. You look but see nothing. Can't look at any of the doors in this mission. This room closely resembles the Enterprise sick bay. The beds are powered, as is the central post console. A sick bay? Aha! Uh -huh. It does kind of look like that. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Can't figure out what any of this stuff does. If it's sick bay, can we use the medical tricorder? There's nothing there requiring. It would be interesting to analyze them back aboard the Enterprise, but these are probably vaccines, medicines, and research viruses. Do they pose any threat to us, Doctor? None seems likely to have any effect on human or Vulcan physiology. To be on the safe side, though, I wouldn't recommend taking a snootful from one of the capsules. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Dr. McCoy, who isn't arguing as much with Spock as usual. I guess they are both uh, intrigued by this alien ship. James Kirk, the paragon of a Starfleet captain, feels nothing like a paragon right now. Why? Mr. Spock, your loyal science officer. Lieutenant Buchert, his is not to reason why, his is to obey orders and stay alert. Um, I don't think that's how that goes. Are you religious, Jim? Is Harry Mudd a divine punishment for anything we did wrong? I can't think of anything we did that was that bad. <laughs> True. Sometimes I wish I had become an archaeology professor instead of a Starfleet captain. I don't know. I know some archaeology professors and they don't exactly uh, lead a quiet life either. Should be pretty obvious who I was talking about. You look troubled, Captain. Sorry if I was bothering you. I was just silently cursing the day I met Harry Mudd. Understandable. Captain, count your blessings. We haven't met any salt vampires or deranged computers, blood-draining clouds, cell-imploding sirens, Greek gods, or, or any of the other things that people keep telling me about in security. There's not much I wouldn't do to not have to deal with Mudd. Wow, that bad, huh? Yeah, I bet the security officers on the Enterprise would have some stories. The ones that survive, anyway. Let's go through here. Another mysterious room. You look but see nothing of note. A control console from which operators run the ship. Well, I guess this is the bridge or something. You see a plain gray screen. You see a plain gray screen. I'm trying to look at the dodecahedron, but I guess you can't. A control console from which operators run the ship. You look but see nothing of note. You look but see nothing of note. This appears to be some sort of engineering instrument. Okay. James T. Kirk, captain of the USS Enterprise. Mr. Spock, Vulcan's finest contribution to Starfleet. Dr. McCoy is still frowning. 
Lieutenant Buchard looks intensely at these controls and suppresses a childlike impulse to touch them. Well, just keep suppressing that. I'm speechless, Mr. Spock. Words cannot adequately describe this place. We have done quite well so far, Captain. In spite of Harry Mudd. Speak of the devil. Where is that little angel? I'm not sure I want to know. Boldly go where no man has gone before. We are here, Jim. This may have been their bridge, but this sure doesn't look like the Enterprise. Nope, they use a very different bridge design. Nothing to report, Captain. Evidently the aliens' bridge, their centralized control. A closer look may provide more information. Evidently the aliens' bridge. Evidently the alien... It appears to be a view screen, much like the one on board the Enterprise. Currently not operational? It is a multi-bit compact Duver with its own Draktar traction unit and clamp kit. Sure. I knew at least some of those words. We can take that, however. A multi-purpose repair tool. See, that's a description I can use, Mr. Spock. And we'll continue looking around here in the next video.